of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, welcome everybody. Thanks for being here on this cold night. Valentine's Day is around the corner. So, um, board members, make sure your mics are on so we can hear you. And um, roll call tonight. Everybody is present. Is there any additions or deletions on the agenda? I don't believe so. So we're down to public comment. Yes. I would like to know if you, if the fire department is going to continuously park where the public is, and why we had to go across all the ice and everything to get out to Kitch Park. It's they have seven or eight open spaces that, is, that are plowed out even, and they park they insist on parking where the public is when we have a meeting here. I did talk to the chief tonight about that. Okay. All right, Wayne. Yeah, good evening, board. Uh, Mr. Supervisor, and I wrote this down because uh, I had a number of notes and I just wanted to get my facts uh, together here, so I apologize if it's a little, little scratchy. Uh, Mr. Supervisor, although you continually tell us not to listen to rumors and come to you for correct information, Unfortunately, there's quite a disparity from the information you give us and what the facts really are. Through my research, which includes reviewing township information and freedom of information requests, shows on numerous occasions how you provide false, misleading, and incomplete information to residents. Tonight, I'll give you just a few examples. I mean, there's, there's quite a few, but I'll just give you a few tonight. A few, a few meetings ago, you told everyone this is when you guys approved a third extension for Cho Stack. He hasn't come up with dying yet for the infrastructure. Uh, a few meetings ago, you told everyone, this is Mr. Supervisor, while you're waiting for Cho Stack, Salem Sims to come up with the infrastructure financing, they're picking up the bill. Nothing could be farther from the truth. I forwarded some information, and what you failed to tell everyone is while we're waiting for this developer to show us the money, the township has spent in excess of $800,000 of grant money. Now, that's public money. That's hardly the developer picking up the bill for this, towards the engineering of the infrastructure. You also criticize residents for spreading rumors about the developers getting permits. Actually, Mr. Supervisor, it was you that told us at a public meeting that Washtenaw County Road Commission told them there's no problem getting permits. Now you're changing your story. So you're the one that's actually spreading the rumors. He's also told residents that the sewer ordinance for the USD was brought forward for discussion. I did a, re a little research and I went back. And how could that be when the residents were never notified in the USD that that was even brought forward that night? How could they even have a chance to discuss that? And also, it was on the agenda. It wasn't on the agenda under board discussion. And I have the agenda right here if you want verification of that. Actually, it was under business items where things were uh, actually voted on. And I have the motion right here, actually, Mr. Supervisor. The motion is by you. It's by you. The motion to approve Salem Township Sewer Ordinance. And the maker of the motion was Gary Whitaker, our supervisor. So more false information. So it just seems like when you're caught, your story seems to change. And it's changed numerous times, you know. That job, it isn't supposed to be multiple choice. You're supposed to give us factual information. And just a friendly reminder, being trust being trustworthy is a huge component of being an elected official. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And happy Valentine's Day to everyone. <clears throat> yes. Can I say something? All that money that they got to get township got to the grant is not the township's money. It's going out to all the people that are working on the USD and that's what the, the state gave it to us for. Correct? Okay, anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm a resident of uh, Northville. I, was, I want to say that to make sure I'm allowed to speak. As a sure. Doctor. No, you're welcome. Thanks for being here. Okay, thank you. Just a, just a kind of common question about the uh, Arbor Hills landfill. Um, 
You know, as a resident of Northville, I've been watching the numerous violations. I think there's been 10 since 2016. During calendar 2018, there have been over 2,000 odor complaints that have been formally registered. And then recently, as of January 24, the uh, Michigan Department of Environment and Quality, the MDEQ, uh, made notice of enforcement action against advanced disposal. And I'm just kind of wondering what you are doing to hold them accountable and have done to hold them accountable. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Okay, if not, well, okay. yeah. No, that, doesn't that man get an answer? Uh, as of right now, right now, right now. Pardon? Do you have something to say? It's public well, comment. Got, you got yeah, two public, or three yeah, minutes. I got a couple turn. things to say. Right, I just on. wonder why that man doesn't get an yeah, answer. I'm not saying he's not getting an answer. Who said no. that? You did? Well, he should you get want an answer there. Okay. okay. It's public Second comment. of all, uh, Gary, last time I asked a question here, you, you made a smart ass comment to me. Okay. Take it or leave it. Okay. About uh, cable. Yeah. You remember that? No. Oh, yes, you should. It's on tape. It. It's on tape. Okay. Now, what is happening with cable with their dust control? Okay. Not a damn thing. You haven't okay. done nothing. Okay. Now, what's it? Have you done anything since the last meeting, Gary? Okay. Or are you going to sit out there and get smart? Right. Are you done? Yeah. All right, thank you. Next. Isn't that something? Okay, anybody else? Yes. I think we. I think the township's done a lot towards the dust control because they're going to build a road starting in about two weeks. They're going to start taking trees down. And the county's down there. They're down there surveying right now. Uh, it has nothing to do with the well, It's uh, not your uh, turn. Issue. You got a turn. <coughs> just a public comment. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? <coughs> Wayne? Yeah, I find it very interesting that you tell a resident the resident's been waiting over six years yes. for some relief from the uh, uh, the uh, from the uh, concrete crushing operation and what goes on over there. And you've given Showstack three extensions. You told this gentleman take it or leave it at the last minute. Talking to a resident. We see what kind of supervisor you really are. When Showstack comes in here and you've given them three one-year extensions, how come you haven't told them take it or leave it and hit the road? Okay. You should treat everybody fairly, don't you think? And more importantly, those that have a vested interest in our community, like the residents, they're the true stakeholders of our community. You treat them with a whole different set of rules. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, mine's kind of the same thing with the CEQ. Uh, you know, they did a, they did a, they come out and did some studies last year, and on June 11th, they sent a certified letter to Gary Whitaker, supervisor, Salem Township, you know, stating that, uh, you know, they're in violation of this rule 901B, which states. Now, unreasonable interference with comfortable enjoyment of life and property, which is what we're dealing with down here with this dust road, you know, road dust from Cairo. You know, and they went on to say that the dust fallout was observed with sufficient intensity and frequency and duration to constitute a violation of this rule. And then they they sent in the survey letter. They wanted you to send <clears throat> corrective actions that you're going to initiate, and their recommendations was enforcing township ordinances. <coughs> ordinances. The township never even bothered to respond to this letter at all. Didn't even respond. And not a damn thing got done down there at the Kalo. And two meetings ago as I was here, you said Washtenaw County was on them for the wheel washers. There's nobody at Washtenaw County. That's a, alluding to the false truths. I'm going to say lie, whatever, like Wayne was saying. You'll say anything to get out of a pickle. But facts are facts. And I talked to Terry <coughs> Seidel, Cheryl Seidel who authored this letter and sent it to you. I'd, I'd, I'd like an answer too. Number one, why didn't you respond? And number two, why is it that you refuse to enforce township ordinances? It's your job, since we got rid of our zoning administrator. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, one thing, Gary. Yeah. Take it or leave it. Okay, all right. Anybody else? All right. Okay, moving on down to the agenda. Good job, Lynn. Okay, uh, consent agenda. We have uh, Mr. Yes. Mr. Supervisor, I move that Salem Township approve the following consent agenda items. We have last month's meeting minutes of January 8th, 2019, uh, the meeting of the Board of Trustees. 
Next we have the disbursements for January 2019. Out of the general fund, we have check roster of $85,243.51. That's checks 28087 through 28148 We had a payroll of $60,816.67. Uh, we had fund transfers through PayCorp that cost $557.89. Uh, disbursements out of the sewer fund, $8,492.37. Escrow fund, $2,427.50. And the uh, MEDC fund, uh, we had $112,202.56. So now for the invoices that will be paid in February, uh, general fund, $64,145.02. Escrow fund, $38,029.25. Sewer fund, $7,659.51. And out of the MEDC fund, we have invoices for uh, that will go towards the sewer of $44,693. And for the water, $16,947.54. We have a second on all these. I'll second. Mr. Daniel seconds. Any other questions? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Consent agenda is passed. Uh, so we received an email today from uh, Advanced Disposal about uh, contributing to the road project on Chubb Road and Five Mile. Um, the, their contribution is $1.5 million. Half of that is the um, as there's going to be their assessment that will, will be on Five Mile Road of properties that they own. Um, so the million dollars that is left to be spread over both roads, which would be Chubb Road and also Five Mile, um, to this project that, as we understand now, will start <coughs> in June of uh, this coming year. So we appreciate uh, their uh, support of this project and contributing to it, and uh, we can post this on our website. Um, uh, the action that has been taken by advanced disposal. They're not here, the representatives tonight, we thought they'd be, uh, be here, but they had some issues, so um, they will probably be at the next meeting to elaborate more on this. Mr. Supervisor, I do wanna say that's amazing that we have a, a company, a local company, willing to donate an extra million dollars. <laughs> Think about that, an extra million dollars that they're, they don't have to do, but they did it. That's just incredible to me. <laughs> well, it's um, it really helps with the project and spread. There's uh, businesses uh, and people who are on that road um, that will be all contributing. And as we move forward, there will be assessments on the properties of property owners that are on that road to complete this project. Okay, moving on down to the special assessment district, Chubb Road project resolution. Mr. Supervisor, um, in order to move forward with the uh, special assessment tax rolls, uh, we need to, uh, for, uh, the board approved last December, we approved the, uh, our contributions as well as what the uh, million dollar contribution for the, uh, from the, uh, so I need to have the two following motions. I move the Salem Township approve the following motion. The Salem Township Board of Trustees having previously uh, approved the contribution of 1.3 million by the Salem Township for the general fund to the project of paving Chubb Road and Five Mile Roads. The board hereby acknowledge or allocates that this contribution as follows. 60% for Chubb Road and 40% for Five Mile Road project. Second. I'll second. Okay, AJ? I'd like to uh, explain exactly why we came up with the 60-40%. When we go back and we, we actually looked at and 
we had our engineers when they were engineering those roads. Um, the actual cost of the five mile road comes in about 40% of the, the total, and, 60, and uh, Chubb Road comes in to about 60%. That is due to, I thought it would be the other way around because they're going to have to put 18 inches of fill over the um, swamp down there on five mile. But the problem, the real problem is on Chubb Road, we have to, we have to change the elevations, especially around the railroad tracks as well as there's some other hills in there that exceed the uh, grade levels that for a Class A road. So that there is a lot more extensive work that has to be done on the road base itself on the Chubb Road project. So that's why there is more, uh, it's more expensive to do the Chubb Road than it is the, uh, the uh, five mile section. So the 60-40 split was based upon the construction cost to try to keep the contributions the same. <coughs> this is open for board discussion. This is, this is only a suggestion, and if the board has other means, I would certainly uh, would like to hear any uh, discussion relative to a different figure that uh, somebody would have. I think the 60-40 is is acceptable um, when you look down the properties that are on both on both roads. Unless <coughs> somebody else. <coughs> Any other questions? <coughs> okay. So have you made the motion? Yep. All right. TJ, you have a second, TJ. Okay. Any other questions on this? I have a question. You're out of order right now. One point three million dollars of my money. I can't ask a question. Okay. Or our money. You can in a minute when it's public comment. Thank you, sir. Okay. After you vote. Okay. All right. Any other questions? <clears throat> All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? In the same vein, we need to um, move the Salem Township to approve the following motion: advance disposal on behalf of the Arbor. Uh, Hills Landfill have generously agreed to contribute one million to the project of paving Chubb Road and Five Mile Road. This board hereby allocates that contribution as follows: 60% to the Chubb Road paving and 40% to the Five Mile project. You have a second. Support. <coughs> Mr. Trent supports. Any other questions yeah. on this? Yeah, I have a question. Okay. Sure. Just to clarify, because they sent this letter saying they're contributing 1.5 million, <clears throat> and this here is for the 1 million, so the half a million additional is going to go towards the 5, five million. Mile project. Okay. What the what the half a million dollars, the $500,000 that they are contributing that part of that is their of their assessment, but they're overpaying their assessment by about two hundred and sixty one thousand dollars, roughly thereabouts, given the sixty forty split. And so what that is because they are prepaying their assessment on the five miles, what that will do is that will go to offset those residents on the five mile project because they are they are legally that's where it has to be done because they're within that assessment in history. But the total is one and a half. Right. That's that, that they're whole, contributing. Right. Towards the whole project. Their special assessment. <clears throat> but really to the whole the, the whole project though, it's already only one million dollars that they'll be contributing. And that will be distributed out between the five mile and the chub road. Any other questions? It might be a moot point, Mr. Supervisor, but uh, following up on uh, Mrs. McLaughlin's inquiry. Has a determination been made on what the uh, cost for each parcel owner is? Has that formula been calculated? I thought that was a work in progress that would be made public at the public hearing for this issue. That, that work is, has progressed. We have used numbers, but we cannot share anything until the board passes this, this, this distribution. So it's... Uh, a rough guesstimate at this yes. point as to what their share would be. Yes. To to delineate even further, 
what I have talked with the uh, road commission. And what we're going to do is we're more than likely going to try, we're, we're planning on it right now, to have two separate bids when we go out for bid. There will be one for the five mile and there will be one for Chubb. And then what hap who will get awarded will be the, the aggregate of the two who has the best price or will select the uh, contractor based on both prices, not just one or the other. There will not be two contractors involved, one for five mile and one for Chubb. There will only be one contractor. But that way we can have an exact determination. Because all we were really doing here, are we're really looking at estimates from the engineers. We have not seen anything, um, and we can't give any firm numbers until the actual construction costs come in, and then we would know what they are. Thank you. I guess I have a, a little bit of a concern. Uh, being the lack of uh, property, the property owners on the south side of Five now, uh, being so few there, including the golf course, being the largest property owner. Um, going to 6040 towards Chubb Road, are we not putting more on the table for them, you know, dollar-wise, to absorb? Yes, but one like the, what TJ's question here with regards to the other half of the million dollars, but when you take the their share, it's going to be an overpayment. Right. We'll go then towards only towards the five mile. It significantly reduces the other three uh, landowners because there's really only four landowners really on the five mile road, and it significantly reduces their their assessments. Okay. Right, thank you. <coughs> Okay, any other questions? Okay, we have a second on that, right? Yep. All right. And all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, now we're down to the, um, will be the tree. Well, we need to do the resolutions. Oh, okay. resolutions. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Supervisor, we have a, um, a resolution, a special assessment district resolution for each of the projects. And they're in your board packet, and they have a map attached. So you can see that. It's a two-page resolution. I do need to read it, so bear with me. Resolution 2019-02-12-03. Approving and confirming special assessment district project plans and revised costs, special assess assessment district term, and directing supervisor to prepare the special assessment role. On September 20th, 2018, the Salem Board um, of Trustees approved a resolution declaring its intent to proceed with this establishing a special assessment district to finance the paving and the improvement of Chubb Road between five and six miles. The purpose of the project is to provide road improvement with a special benefit to industrial, commercial, residential, and all property owners adjacent to Chubb Road between five and six. Now, therefore, be it resolved as follows. The township will proceed with the project as described above and hereby establish the special assessment district to finance the cost of this project. The special assessment district, now known as the district, is, is defined as all properties adjacent to Chubb Road between five and six, uh, and also see Exhibit A, which is your map. Washtenaw County engineers have prepared plans showing the project, which, which the plans are on file uh, in the clerk's office. The estimated cost of the project is $2,478,395. That's the estimate that Dale was talking about just uh, a few minutes ago. A periodic redetermination of this cost may be necessary without changing the district's property or boundaries. The date at which such redetermination re, uh, may be made is October 8, 2019. The Salem Township Board of Trustees has previously approved a contribution of $1.3 million to the project for the paving of Chubb Road and Five Mile which the Township Board of Trustees hereby allocates that this contribution is as follows. 60% to Chubb Road, 
and 40% to the five mile paving project. Also, Advanced Disposal, on behalf of Arbor Hills Land for Bill, has agreed to a contribution of a million dollars to the project for the paving of Chubb Road and Five Mile. This allocation will be as follows, 60% to Chubb Road and 40% to Five Mile. The term of this special assessment district shall be 15 years. The Township Board hereby directs the supervisor to prepare a special assessment role which shall describe the parcels to be assessed, the names of the owners of record of each parcel, and the total amount to be assessed against each parcel after deducting the contributions by Salem and advanced disposal. The Township Board will conduct a subsequent public hearing for the purpose of hearing statements for and objections to the assessment role for the district. Notice of such public hearing uh, is provided by the law MCL 41-724. I don't think we need a second on this. Do we need a second? Yeah, we do need a second. I'll second. Converse seconds. Just write this. Okay, uh, we'll have a roll call on this, Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Supervisor, I have a brief question. Okay. Uh, in paragraph denoted as number two on the top of page two, the last line, the date at which such redetermination may be made is October 8th, 2019. Is that uh, a date that's um, determined by statute uh, from which point? Uh, time that we approve this resolution or uh, how, how is that uh, determined? It's not a set time frame by statute that it, that's the, just a random date it was picked we would be well beyond the, uh, the bidding stage we would know the actual cost of the contract at that point so if there, if there does need to be an adjustment to the amount for the special assessment we would certainly know it by that time. And uh, and only because that happens to be my wife's birthday uh, <laughs> Looking at the calendar, that's the second Tuesday of the month, so that just happens to fall on our board meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we'll call for the roll. All right. Adverse? Yes. DeLuca? Yes. McLaughlin? Yes. Wensley? Yes. Trent? Yes. Daniel? Yes. And Whitaker? Yes. All right, so now we have an identical um, resolution, but this is now for five mile. So again, bear with me. Resolution 2019-2-12-04, approving and confirming special assessment districts, project plans, and revised costs, special, special assessment district term, and directing supervisor to prepare the special assessment rule. On September 20th, 2018, the Salem Township Board of Trustees approved a resolution declaring its intent to proceed with establishing a special assessment district to finance the paving and improvement of Five Mile Road between Chubb and Napier. The purpose of this project is to provide road improvement with a special benefit to industrial, commercial, residential, and all property owners adjacent to Five Mile between Chubb and Napier. Now, therefore, uh, let it be resolved as follows. The township will proceed with this project as described above and hereby establish the special assessment district to finance the cost of this project. The special assessment district, known as the district, is defined as all properties adjacent to Five Mile Road between Chubb and Napier, set forth in the uh, map, which is Exhibit A. Washtenaw County engineers have prepared plans showing the project which plans are on file in the clerk's office. The estimated cost of the project is $1,681,000. A periodic redetermination of the cost may be necessary without changing the district properties or boundaries. The date at which such redetermination may be made is October 8, 2019. 
The Salem Township Board of Trustees has previously approved a contribution of $1.3 million to the project for paving of Chubb Road and Five Mile Road. Hereby allocates that the contribution is as follows. 60% to Chubb Road, 40% to the Five Mile Paving Project. Advanced Disposal, on behalf of the Arbor Hills Landfill, has agreed to a contribution of $1 million to the project for the paving of Chubb Road in five miles. The allocation that uh, contribution will be as follows, 60% to Chubb Road and 40% to the five mile paving project. The term of the special assessment district shall be 15 years. The Township Board hereby directs the Township Supervisor to prepare a special assessment role which shall describe the parcels to be assessed, the names of the owners of record for each parcel, and the total amount to be assessed against each parcel after deducting the contributions to the project by the Township and advanced disposal. The Township Board will conduct a subsequent public hearing for the purpose of hearing statements for and objections to the assessment role for the district. By law, MCL 41.724. We have a second on this one. Okay, any other discussion? All right, all those in favor, we'll no. take a roll call. Oh, yeah. Converse? Yes. DeLuca? Yes. McLaughlin? Yes. Wensley? Yes. Trent? Yes. Daniel? Yes. And Whitaker? Yes. Just get a rubber stamp. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Roberts? Okay. I move Salem Township approve um, to authorize Supervisor Whitaker to sign the wetland mitigation agreement with the Washington County uh, Road Commission in the amount of Forty-two thousand for the purchase of wetland <coughs> mitigation credits for the Chubb Road and Five Mile Paving Paving Project. Second. I'll second. As, as we are aware, that there's a lot of um, constructions through the uh, wetlands area down there, plus there's also some uh, culverts and stuff that's needed. And um, they determined that there is, it's in the, uh, the um, handout that proceeds this for after this motion. It's like we need 0.35 acres that need to be uh, mitigated. And um, there's also, they're, they're going into the bank and they're basically getting that, we have to go through that process. The DEQ has is highly involved and mostly all involved in it. So it's fee that has to be uh, charged in order to uh, get the mitigation for the DEQ. So Dale, we also want to mention that the Road Commission did go out for bidding on this process yes. of the trees. And they came back with... Uh, this is the wetlands. Oh, I'm sorry. We haven't got to the trees yet. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, thanks. All right. All right, so that's the uh, that's for the uh, mitigation to the uh, well, the wetlands. Okay, we have a second. Any other discussion on this? Yes, Mr. Supervisor. Yep. Where exactly is this wetland that is the subject of concern? Basically, it's a swamp on Five Mile. <coughs> so we're having to yeah. mitigate expensive swamp land. Yeah, well, what happens is that when they, they have to build that road up 18 inches, they have to bring 18 inches of fill. If the correct distance they have to be, will extend out into the, into the water, so there'll be it's just a few feet, but, but it requires mitigation. I think there's also another culvert that they're putting in on Chuck Road. I think there's also one down in there. It's a small amount. But I'm not sure which one is the one that actually... Uh, <coughs> something that we've kind of known was <coughs> when they went back through there was a lot of studies where they actually went back in 
to give a little bit of history to the board and to the public here that uh, that stretched through the uh, through the uh, swamp to the water down there. <coughs> that road is built up on a cribbing, and then they put a lot of dirt or gravel and stuff over the top of it. But when that road was originally constructed, and when they drilled down to do the the uh, geo off underneath the road, um, there's that cribbing sits on a lot of peat moss and sludge and mud and whatever. And, but it's in still good shape. And I used to drive that road a lot, and that's usually the best part of five mile open that stretch. But it's in good shape, and they don't say we need to do anything with it, except for add another 18 inches on top of it to give it more of a base for the heavy trucks. Because <coughs> it will be a, a costly road. <coughs> so that's why, if they're going up, it has to go out a little bit wider. <coughs> Okay. I just wanted to clarify that that forty-five thousand. I don't know if that's the truth, but forty-two thousand is going to be part of our contribution. It will. It'll come out of our contribution, not additional. There, all the costs that we have, we have associated with the, will be the trees, the, <coughs> the, aviation, the railroad crossing, the engineering fees that we initially put into this. This all goes back into the great big giant. Uh, total cost of the project, and um, what we really will do is this will just offset that 1.3 million. We'll be offset in that 1.3 million dollar contribution that we have. Mr. Supervisor, if I could just add, I did have a conversation with the road commission this morning, and there is a possibility, only a possibility at this point, that uh, they may not have to incur that $42,000 expense for wetland mitigation. So. Um, if that's the case, obviously they won't spend the money. But because we want to move the project forward, we need to approve this just in case they do have to spend it. Oh, good news. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. If not, we have a second already. Yes. All right. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, uh, any opposed? I move that Salem Township approve um, to authorize Supervisor Whitaker to sign the tree removal agreement for the Chubb Road and Five Mile Paving Project for the payment to the Washington County Road Commission the amount not to exceed forty-five thousand dollars. Second. Second. Okay. Seconds. Any other? Discussion on the tree removal? As I said, they did have three bids, and uh, this came back on the lowest. Mm -hmm. And if everybody drug driven up and down that road, there's telephone poles that have to be moved. There's trees within a couple of feet of the road. Um, when the road gets wetter, they, they're going to get them anyway, and they're not. They're a safety concern. And so anything that's really is within the ditching and all that stuff that have, they have to come down. And I think there, I don't know how many, there's quite a few trees that have to come down. And um, <coughs> which is not good news, but it, it has to happen. And they also have to be down by the 1st of April because of uh, the Indiana bat law, which states that trees can't be uh, cut down if the bats are nesting in them, they can't be cut down. So this stuff has to be done and completed before the first vehicle. Has the uh, contractor been identified for this project? Yes, it's um, tremendous. 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 <laughs> I believe they're on the south line. Right. Any chance to any of our business owners have a chance at it? Um, it was put on the website, and it also so we had a list. There were a couple of people on the list. I'm not sure if it was who the other people were. Mm -hmm. I know but, White had mentioned that he wanted. Yeah, it was on. So they had three bids, but I didn't see White's on there. Okay. One of the uh, just to maybe clarify a little bit this because quick uh, mine expense. Uh, was extremely interested in putting my bid in this as well. 
one of the things that is required is that these trees, not, it's not just cut the trees down, but they actually physically have to go in and grind or dig up the, the stumps. And I think that that's probably where some of these uh, tree removal they uh, are getting into the point where they can go in and get the stumps out. So it's, the stumps were probably the, the key factor in, in doing it. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, any other questions? All right, if not, all those in favor say aye. 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 And they're opposed? Motion's passed. Okay, and real quick, moving down to the Board of Review, is that what we're at? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this we do every year, Board of Review comes up in March. I kind of have the date here. Yeah, it be posted on the website when it is, but uh, Board of View is coming up in March, and we have to go through this process uh, to uh, protest in writing to the Board of Review to allow residents. In order to ease the burden on taxpayers, the assessor, and the Board of Review, and to ensure that all taxpayers have an equal opportunity to be heard by the Board of Review, the Elm Township here by resolves according to the provision of MCL, to 1130 of the General Property Tax Act that the Board of Review shall receive letters of protest regarding assessments from residents, taxpayers from the first Tuesday, there it is, first Tuesday in March till it adjourns from the public hearings for which it meets to hear such protest. All notices of assessment change at the reversements of the Board of Review meetings are to include a statement that the resident taxpayer may protest by letter to the Board of Review. The following resolution was offered by me and supported by? Support. Mr. DeLuca. And we need a roll call vote. Converse? Yes. Daniels? Yes. DeLuca? Yes. McLaughlin? Yes. Trent? Yes. Bunsley? Yes. And Whitaker? Yes. Second resolution, Board Review Property Hardship Guidelines. Whereas the adoption of the guidelines for property exemptions is within the preview of the Salem Township Board, and whereas the homestead of the persons who in the judgment of the supervisor and the Board of Review, by reason of poverty, hardship, are unable to contribute to the public charges and eligible for exemptions in whole or part from taxation under Public Act 390, 1994. And whereas pursuant to PA 390, 1994, Salem Township, Washington County adopts the following guidelines for the supervisor and the Board of Review to implement. Now therefore, it is resolved that the Board of Review shall follow above state policy and federal guidelines in granting or denying any exemptions. The forwarding resolution was offered by me and supported by? Support. Mr. Trent. And we will receive a roll call vote. <coughs> Converse? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Luca? Yes. Laughlin? Yes. Trent? Yes. Lensley? Yes. And Whitaker? Yes. Okay, down to financials, Township Administrative Assistant promotion. I move that Salem Township approve the promotion of Barbara Thompson from the position of administrative, at administrative assistant to the administrative assistant number one at the rate of seventeen dollars an hour. I'll second it. Mr. DeLuca seconds. Most of you know Barb and being at the front desk has done a great job. Uh, she's uh, contributed contribute a lot of the uh, extra work that has been done in the office and we appreciate her commitment to the township. Um, also, um, one of the big things that has taken place as, as far as the absentee ballots, when, uh, when uh, people want an absentee ballot, um, it's important that somebody's here and she's done a great job taking that 
whole job over as far as providing them absentee ballots and providing them to uh, the people as they need them as they come in. So that's been a real help, but um, uh, she's done a great job. So uh, any other discussion about Barb? Okay, if not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Supervisor, I move that uh, Salem Township approve these following budget amendments for uh, two, for our 2018-19 calendar fiscal year. For the uh, in the department of the township supervisor, the admin uh, one now because of just this recent um, uh, increase in barbs. The budget is set at 27056. We need to revise that to 34956. So that's additional 7900. <coughs> the payroll tax uh, budgeted 6180, revised budget 6280. That's an additional $100. In the clerk's uh, line items, this the deputy uh, for her salary, we only budgeted 22797. We need to revise that to 27, 597, so that's an additional $4,800. The tax, 4310, raise that to 5010, so that's an increase of $700. So to offset those increases, uh, the travel budget, the budget was 2500, we lowered it to 500, it's a negative 2000. Education, <coughs> education and training, 2000, budget down is to zero. So that's another savings of 2000 And equipment and software, budget of 2500 revised the budget down to 1000 so that's uh, additional negative uh, 1500 Now in the elections, we have, um, again, some uh, budget amendments. Election workers' pay was budgeted at $10,000. Uh, we can reduce that to $200, so that's a savings of 9800 uh, however, the other uh, election workers pay for employees, uh, the budget was 2000 and we revised the budget up to 9100 so that's an increase of 7100 Travel, uh, $500 budget increased to 2000 Miscellaneous uh, was 100 we raised that to 700 Equipment and software was 1000 we raised that to 1600 so that balanced that... Um, uh, elections off to zero. Engineering services. Uh, we have a budget of fifty thousand for engineering services, uh, but we can revise that all the way down to eight thousand. So that's a savings of forty-two thousand. <coughs> However, for Chubb Road paving, some of the costs that we had to go through this year, we budgeted zero. Uh, so we need to raise that to one hundred ten thousand. So that's an additional one hundred ten thousand to. Um, that line item and the last line item is for highways and streets uh, for dust control we budgeted 45,000 we can lower that to 41 that saves 4,000 uh, road maintenance we budgeted a half a million we revised it up to 506 506,000 so that's an additional 6,000 um, so we balance all these off out of the contingency fund, um, the budget was 166408 We lowered the, uh, the revised budget for the contingency fund is now 88408 So that was a, uh, we basically, we basically took 78000 out of the contingency fund to rebalance our budget. So that's the bottom line. And that is um, the first budget amendments we've had all year. So that's pretty good. Do we have a second? I'll second. Any other questions on the amendments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mr. Converse. Mr. Supervisor, I move the Salem Township approve the minor increases in several extra charge uh, items uh, for the new fire truck. See the additional uh, items on the attached list. Um, I can explain a little bit this if uh, 
Second. You got a second on this? Support. Mr. Trent. Okay, Mr. Chambers. Is um, may or may not be aware what we did a lot in this last go round is we we kind of went through a generic build process. The past uh, couple of fire engines that we've had, there was an exhaustive and extensive specification that went in and put that we felt really drove up the price of the uh, vehicles. Um, as, but, but more importantly, it put some limits on who could who could basically would submit bids for the uh, for the engine. Um, we did go out for extra bids, and uh, because the specificity was too great, so we went back forth more with a generic build. And in so doing, um, we put, took pretty much uh, generic, and that's this is what we got. But after uh, Chief Rockwell and uh, Joe Yukunas went out to uh, Nebraska to actually go through, they actually went through and actually saw walked the line, saw trucks were coming, looking at things that may or may not, they would want it, some of the things that they wanted to delete or different different things. There's a whole complete list that's in the board packet, many, many pages of things that they actually changed. But in addition to that, it actually increased the, uh, the cost. Um, I don't see here, it doesn't say in the motion here, but it actually increased the cost Seven thousand four hundred ninety-five dollars. So, the, what we need to do is because we did approve that truck, but I will also go back and say, and I had some major concerns of increasing the cost. But when I look at the nearest closest competitor, when we went through the bidding process, the next one was like thirty thousand dollars more. So we didn't get into a violation where we added costs that would exceed what the other the other. Um, competitive bid in the committing process. So I felt very comfortable that um, you know we can we can go back through it if these are these changes and I've I've gone through and looked at these changes and Chief Rockwell has a better idea because he was the one that actually made them but most of these I totally agree with. Uh, not but not seeing them I don't know exactly what they were but um, if it's something that improves the product that we have and, and the serviceability of it. I think something that we, we really need to take a look at. So if you want to say anything, Jim, in regards to that. Yeah, thank you. That's a, it's a pretty good summary. <coughs> so we finalized a lot of the details because we had a generic spec. So when we went out there, some of it, you'll see seven pages, but a lot of it's like install that on the left-hand corner of the, the right uh, A post mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. So a lot of the details are in there when you finalize your documents with the engineers is will fit and then make adjustments. We did beef up uh, some of the rust proofing to it. Um, we went with more of a rubberized coating inside the, uh, the engine and the cab to, to have the expectation that we would keep it 25 to 30 years. So again, when you do lowest bidder, they're going to put the thin paint in there. We went with the rubberized coating. So we kind of beefed up a little bit of the uh, specs in there that was on the generic side to, to uh, ensure that we could have that truck hopefully 25 plus years like we did with the last engine. And then, again, a lot of the details are more kind of specific to once you finalize it, the engineer says, well, you can't put that there because so you have something else. So a lot of the details are finalizing those pieces. It was uh, 16 hours plus of going through every line item that's in the contract. So pretty detailed. I don't know if the board has any questions specifically. Um, there is some ads. There are some subtractions. Everything that gets changed is noted, and that's why it's so detailed. All right. Any other discussion? Uh, will there be another one of these uh, a couple months down the road? Or? I, I don't expect it. Uh, this is finalized. But one of the things we don't want to do is, uh, I hate to say it's when you buy furniture, you say, oh, I want it here, I want it over there. We want this truck built. So we don't really go out and see them again until it's done and we'll take the, the, the final spec. <coughs> There is a, uh, a potential to do a mid uh, visit, mm -hmm. midline construction visit. 
we may choose to not do that to one to expedite the, the, the uh, truck delivery and two to save some money that we'll get back from the vendor so uh, we didn't do that with our tanker and I don't expect to do that with the engine one other question I did have though is I did notice in here that due to the scope of the ad the ads that you put in here and delete so it will add another 30 days to no, the that that's incorrect that's uh, so um, the updated proposal that I have is the exact same thing that you have and they've deleted the 30-day ad okay I just couldn't get that until like yesterday, so I couldn't get any. Okay. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Um, Franco. Well, um, obviously the weather's been a big play in the number of fire calls that we've had. We've had a number of uh, residents uh, find their uh, vehicles in the ditches or, or play to uh, comfortable with their with their cars um we had some unusual calls we had a, a, a gentleman get lost away from detroit and uh, so we did have a number of calls with these icy roads and i think tonight's conditions we might be back there again so we just ask that folks kind of take it slow generally i don't have the problems with you residents i see all the people that pass through our community think that uh that it's still safe to go 60 miles an hour so Please drive safely, and I hope not to see you. Um, I do, um, we did have 38 calls. <coughs> our average response time was five minutes and 13 seconds. The, the uh, HVA, our dispatch center, is changing their software, and uh, it's been challenging for them, and we've been working with them directly to try to, uh, as you as you change in software, it's a little bit hard to learn, and that's what they're going through that. <coughs> okay. Any questions from the board? Okay, thanks, Chief. Thank you. Okay, any um, general updates anybody want to talk about? Uh, we just got the business stuff done. You know, I, I guess I'm going to say because I put it in here and we have put it in every quarter, but um, you know, with the addition of the fire truck, we moved about $300,000 out of the savings account. We had some checks come back in and we put it right back in. So the amount of money that we have in our savings account, even though we have bought this fire apparatus, we're still roughly pretty much the same as where we were last quarter. So I look at that as a positive that uh, we're doing the right things. I will also come back and mention, I wish he was here because I'd like to, like to uh, acknowledge him in public but I have been noticing um, for the last couple, three, four years, January, it starts in November, December, and January are usually down big time on our gas revenues. We've seen them down as low because we normally get around $100,000 a month plus or minus. I've seen them down to $60,000. Last month we got in $148,000 from the gas revenue. So the work that they have done down there to mitigate the um, orders and the gas is basically coming into our checkbooks instead of going into the residents downstream from it. They'll never get rid of all of the smells going downstream, downwind, but certainly the least, the least amount that you put into the area is, is, is a significant help for that. And I think we're seeing it. We're seeing the result of it financially. And um, I think that they have taken, since they have taken on the gas production uh, end of the landfill down there, they've been working their behinds off to try to reduce that. And they're, they're even now, I think they're even going to have to go and put in another, they're talking about even putting in another generator because they're getting enough gas that. Um, their other ones are three of them are in full full steam. So um, I think it's a lot to them for the job that they're trying to do to step up to the concerns that, that they know about and have, are very well aware of. But also it puts a big plus in our pocketbooks as well as their own too. So um, I just think it's it's worthy to note that they are doing a good job of trying to be uh, you know, concerned. 
Okay. Okay, so um, any other? you have a question? Uh, not a I question, think. but maybe just a follow-up comment from Mr. Converse's uh, positive point about our, the impact on our financial cash flow. Yes, that is true. And I think uh, it's a step in the right direction that the uh, advanced disposal took over the operation of the gas operation. Uh, however, and I don't know if it's uh, partly attributable to the cold weather because uh, we've learned over time that the cold weather does uh, seem to increase the odor smells uh, around the landfill. And we did have a very cold several weeks here. Um, and uh, the representatives are not here to address this concern. And we've you know, had the, the citizen from our neighboring community that's come to point out the, uh, the number of voter complaints and I think we're well aware that there's been an ongoing problem there. Uh, Mr. Supervisor, by chance, uh, are we aware of any new update uh, information from Advanced Disposal on their efforts to uh, mediate the problem that uh, we know it exists there? Right. So before we address that, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to some of these things we addressed tonight and um, I'd like to address the uh, our Northville resident first. Um, they um, again the ongoing problem with the gas lines. I don't. Um, I, I noticed that the you know the uh, reply to the order complaints that come in, which I am emailed on it, comes to my email that they are starting to you know to they we're still getting them, but it's um, you know there's certain days that it seems like it seems to be worse than normal. Um, the uh, uh, Every time we ask for an update from actually every one of our meetings, there are representatives from the landfill that are here, and unfortunately tonight they're not here, to address uh, all the new stuff that's been put into place as they work on this new cell that's, um, um, you know, they're putting a kind of a new entrance, not a new entrance, but uh, they're filling in the, um, where, where the scales were before there that's going to be closest up to the north hill side um uh i th th that's the thing that's going to concern me most about when they start digging that and and it's kind of like tapping into the old landfill that was there so um again uh you know we you know we have the discussions they're assuring us that the odor complaints should be getting less and less uh, there's been days when it, it hasn't, uh, you know, it hasn't been, and we have asked them, and they have come and made some reports about how they're trying to make progress with the new flares and everything that they're doing down there to try to eliminate the problem. Um, I know it's not a perfect answer, but uh, we uh, uh, we are concerned about it and want to see them eliminate. Keep the <coughs> uh, I, I don't know how many millions it was last time. I remember it was you know, three, four million dollars that they were putting into it and there was a lot more that they have to put in to renew these gas wells. And I'm sure you know not to go on, on where, where the old gas wells were not being maintained and uh, it seemed like after that started happening that um, uh, all the complaints of the odor started coming in at, at, at that point. Um, but now Advance has them. Uh, there's other things that are coming down the pipeline about them uh, taking over um, some of the power plant issues. We haven't heard got an official statement from them yet, but uh, that's what we're hearing that's happening for them to take that over. So uh, it's not a complete solve of the thing, but hopefully we're not going to, you know, it's, it's going to be a, a, a great day when we don't get these odor complaints in. Okay, um, any other um, questions on the landfill or anything that we can answer? We just have our public comment right now to the, to the end since I think we're done unless there's any other board discussion. Yeah. Thanks for waiting around tonight so we can answer some questions. Go ahead. Well, you haven't asked my questions. Okay, well, I'm here to... Excuse me, Go ahead. it's my turn to talk. Go ahead. You know, I find it very interesting how you sugarcoated uh, the contribution, you call it a contribution of $1.3 million. Bottom line is that's uh, Salem Township residents' money. 
that you guys are spending. And if you cut through all the smoke and mirrors on that, and for all the years that I've been in Salem Township and all the people that I've spoken to, I've never heard one complaint about the dust or the truck traffic on any of those roads until you allowed the concrete crushing operation on, on that road. So actually, I look at this as actually you're penalizing the residents of the Salem Township for your mistake. You're, you're making us pay for your mistake here. And, and to me, I, I, I don't think that's, that's appropriate. We all know how you raced <coughs> to get the $10 million for the Showstat grant. You tripped over yourself. And you're probably going to do the same thing to get the next $10 million when that comes down the road. And we also know how you didn't give Salem residents the same consideration and you didn't look into a grant for the Hamlet street, Streetscape project prior to voting on that. I mean, that was an embarrassment to our community. So I'll ask you again. For this road project, did you, now there wasn't any mention at all of any grants at all, or at the very least, was there any grants available for the mitigation portion of that that you guys looked into to help ease the cost for Salem Township residents? Not one of you brought that issue up here today, so I'd be surprised if any of you looked into that. So just want a, a friendly reminder, just writing a check, just sitting up here every month writing a check to fix our roads, and also the truck traffic. It's not just, a, and a board member made a comment, it, wouldn't it be nice to drive on a, a, a road down there that doesn't have any bumps on it? Well, we live on dirt roads here in Salem Township, as part of our rural community. My suggestion to you, sir, would be, if you're not happy driving on dirt roads, move to a community where they have paved roads, and then maybe you'll be happier there. But don't bring your ideas here. That's the problem with that. And you're not addressing the truck traffic, the damage to all the other roads that we're getting by all these trucks in and out of our community, North Territorial, all the other roads. What are you going to do what, what, when, when all those become an issue or the other dirt roads? You're going to try to pave all the roads in our community? You're trying to fix the, your mistakes out of the pockets of Salem Township residents, period. Thank you very much. Sure. All right. Any other public comment? Yes. Uh, I'm not really sure, but you might want to enlighten us. When he left office, didn't we have a $1.4 million lawyer fees that you had to write a check for shortly after you got in office? Okay. I, I, that's a question. Okay. All right. So, I'll, I'll address no, 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 hold on a second. It's I'm, public I, comment. I'm, no, it, I'm, he's at the floor right now. We haven't been acknowledged yet, so. Um, so there were the attorney fees that were that high that that were created for a lot of different reasons. So. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. That yeah. brings up another question on attorney fees. How much did it cost us in attorney fees for uh, our lawyer to defend you and uh, the Leo Geo PPO? Was it, huh? How much, he said. Oh, he done that on honor, I'll bet? Pardon? Did you do that on honor, Ed? Uh, did, did, you, did you do that on honor, or did you charge us for that? No, I charged the township because I had to make a court appearance because they fought the, the PPO rather than uh, complying with the court order. They decided to challenge it, so we had to have a court here. So yes, I will charge the lawyer. And how much, how much cheaper now are our lawyer fees from that, this board to the last board? <laughs> I mean, you're the ones that are talking. We have never exceeded the, the budget right. the, in the six years. Not even compare. You can't even compare. Yeah. That's one thing we, this board, talked about coming in that we are not going to have the kind of lawyer fees that we've had, and we have not had that. So, um, the other thing uh, I want to address, uh, Leonard, on the ears is, uh, and I appreciate you bringing this in, but did you have the follow up letter of the response? Yeah, that Washtenaw County said. Washtenaw okay. County said that the township is paving that road, and once that road is paved, this okay. is this so, problem is going to go away. So, that's not but, the case. But, but, but let me just defend myself to what you're saying. So this was sent, and with Cheryl and myself's response letter, um, we did respond to them. 
She did, you did. No, well, we worked together on a solution. Yeah, they came to you and you said they're going to pave the road and it's going to go away. Well, that's not going to make it go away. Well, it's coming out of cable. We responded to the letter to the DEQ and they were satisfied right. with that. Yeah, that's right, but that's not the answer. That's a false answer. Because well, the, the, I'm the just saying you said we didn't respond, and I'm saying we did respond. Well, you didn't. And if you want to see the letter, I have the letter right up here on my phone. I have it. I got a copy of it as well. All right, so we responded. But it's funny you didn't bring that to the rest of the board. Well, you didn't respond. I did Salem respond Township with respond. the road commission. You called the, the road you, commission called you up and said, hey, what are you going to do about this? Because I talked to her. You yeah. said, well, we're going to pay that. Yeah. Once that payment is done, it'll go away. Yeah. We responded that's to what the DEQ. The letter says Salem Township and the road commission is responding to the deq letter i can give anybody copies of that if you'd like that yeah but that's not the correct response I, that's not where that that's not where that right is coming from not. i'm saying that i responded with the road commission we did it together they're saying that kayla was causing right. I'm, not a saying, nuisance. I'm not talking about that i'm talking about responding to the letter oh, what I about did this respond to the letter. all right well, that's number okay. one you did respond number two okay. why do you refuse to enforce the current township ordinances and fix this. We are trying to fix this. No, what are you doing? We are. We right now we're <coughs> raising the four million dollars to get the road paid. That's not going to fix this. It's coming out of Kalo. Okay. We are fixing it. They're putting in a uh, wheel washer. When? Uh, I'm just. Who's just, who's making them do that? Not not Washington okay. County, like you said that two meetings ago. They, they are going to enforce it and have it put in. That's the next thing that's coming down the pipeline. It is. Okay. In, in, the meantime, it's coming. in the meantime, we have to put up with a health hazard based on what DEQ says. Okay. Is that, that's, that's what your answer is? Okay, Lenny, you have a question? Okay. They've been attending township board meetings since the early 90s. Um, the planning commission back then wanted to keep the township rural on the back of the existing farmers. And I got elected by my family to come and speak that that was not a good way to do it. And I don't always agree with you, Mr. Whitaker, as you know, I don't agree with your board. But one thing that I do appreciate about each and every member on your board is a willingness to talk to the citizens, to provide requested information. That's not true of other individuals in this room that have served on previous boards. They played games. They put documents at Mr. Plato's office and then told the court that they didn't exist. And I think it's very hypocritical for that those individuals to come out tonight and at other nights and try to speak on behalf of the citizens of Salem Township. They had their opportunity to speak on behalf of the citizens of Salem Township is to die. And at some point we were all voted out of office. And I think that there's too much in our country today where everything if I don't if you don't agree with me, you're wrong. And I, I appreciate the ability to come here and have a dialogue and the different points of view are allowed in this room and they're listened to. Thank you. Yeah, back to the openness and transparency regarding this gentleman's comments here. I, I, to the Freedom of Information Act, I asked, I asked for quite a bit of information. I asked for an itemized list of the money that was spent from the grant money, which you misled the board on completely at the last meeting, or two meetings ago, I believe it was, where you, you said the show staff was picking up the tab for, uh, in the interim before they did come up with the financing, and we know they're not being paid for with grant money, over $800,000 is being paid. So I did get an answer from that, and I expected an answer from that, because you're required to report back to the, the MEDC with the report on that. And I also asked how, how much can I, I can I interrupt no, you just for no, a second? No, it's my turn. No, no, no. This, I said, no, this, is, public, even, this no. is public comment. No, you're sir. wrong at that. I said we're both having dialogue. So this is I public said, comment. I'll no. finish first. I said, I'll finish no, I'll finish first. No, I'll speak. I'll finish first. No, I'm saying the 88,000 or the 800,000. What are you saying it came out of? The it came out of the grant money, sir. Right. It's the grant money, which is public money. Okay. All right. Which Just is want to make sure we understood that. And I'm speaking, sir. You asked right. me not to interrupt you while you're speaking. I'm saying this is not this Page is, five this is, up there, we sir. We are still it's under turn to speak, sir. board discussion and we're <clears throat> no. answered our, our This is public comment. No, sir. You're you're wrong. I said I would take public comment along with addressing our North Well, you're gonna let us again because you said it was public no, comment. You're, 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 I said with public comment we'll Again. In addition so, to that, I foiled how much money was spent on the Leogio lawsuit that you're the sole remaining defendant on. 
And uh, that, that information wasn't available to me. I got an answer, like I believe it was, that it was uh, paid for through the insurance company and the premiums of the insurance company. So if the board could provide me an itemized list of exactly what the expenditures are that we've incurred due to this lawsuit, I would, I would greatly uh, appreciate that as, as, as well. That would be fair. I didn't get an answer to that. And I also asked for an itemized list of how much show stack has contributed to the, the infrastructure. And I knew that answer already, zero, but I just wanted to verify it. Because you did say something, he's contributing to the meetings, I guess, but not to the infrastructure. Escrow accounts, sir. I didn't finish, sir. And I know it's through the escrow account. And that's what I was alluding to, sir. And that's the answer I got. Thank you. Non-transparent, you're good for that. Sir, thank you. Okay, done? Yes, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Whitaker, and the board for all that you do for us. There's a lot of complaints oh, around here, but there's a lot of good that's been done. So we ought, we ought to all thank you for that. <clears throat> And this is, you know, I don't, I've never really cut people off, and I, you know, unless they're out of order and they're not going to, well, and again, there's, there's, uh, you know, the, the people can make, have feelings and opinions, and we need to respect each other, and that's what I've said, you know, you know, we used to have to share, have to have the sheriff sit on the front row before, or be at the meeting, you know, we don't have to do that, we, we have our, our meetings are usually an hour, and you know, they used to be three hours. They would have two meetings a month, and this thing would go on and on and on. We don't do that anymore, and I'm not going to do it. We're going to have an agenda. We're going to stick to it, and and we're you know, and that's just how it's going to be. If not, then we will adjourn the meeting because I'm not playing the games as I used to play before. And and again, it, and, and with all due respect to to Wayne, you know, you come in and you ask questions, and then you leave, and you don't let us to address it and it's not fair and I've also told you and I've told everybody the best way for you to get answers to your questions is you have my phone number I have been willing to meet with you anytime or if you don't want to just meet with me you can meet with any board member or have two people come in and sit down and talk about all the issues that you have I mean it's like you might have some great ideas about because you live in the USD if the things does come down to play that this actually happens <clears throat> we need people that live over there to help to you know to to make this happen and if it does happen then it gets done the right way you talk about the sewer uh, <coughs> the ordinance but you know uh, uh, I think of his name but Carl um, he, he was one that's real concerned about the sewer ordinance about are we going to force the people to tap into it okay so I instructed the attorney to give me some information about drafts about how do we go about to make sure that we protect the residents who live over there. And they came here, he had a draft came in, and then you came in, and it was just like, oh, look what they're doing here, they were going to make for it. It's, that was not the intent. The intent was, was to go through, get an ordinance. Mr. Plato told me he got the ordinance from some other community that had one that makes people force it. We wanted to take that, go through it, and and if it didn't get done that night, then we can make changes to it, adopt it, and vote on it. That's what it was about. There was no other uh, um, reason to to tr to try to you know lie to somebody. That's not the purpose of this. We want this thing. If it does get done, it needs to get done right. And I will tell you that. And as you know this, because you were on the board before. excuse me, um, that, and I said this and I keep saying it, is that the township has got into issues with the developer before, and basically, in my opinion, it's over simple stuff that did not need to go to arbitration and cost us to pay monies to them. Okay, we should, again, we're, the, the master plan has said this is an area that is going to be developed. You have to figure out how to bring in the public utilities. And that's what we've told the developers, that they have to figure it out. We don't want it on our dime. 
on the taxpayers to levy a tax or whatever if it never develops. That was the whole intent of we, what we said. But because of some of the simple stuff that's happened, because the township wasn't, the, and you were on the board at the time, they went into our arbitration and we had to give them, pay them a quarter of a million dollars. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say if they're going to come in and they have a plan to come in how to finance this thing, we're going to listen. We're not, the answer is not always no. As soon as you say no to some of these guys, the first thing they do is get their attorneys and then you've got a problem. All it does is cost us money. And I don't think that we should do that. I think we should look at everything that they bring, and they brought a bunch of different things. They've made a bunch of proposals. Mr. Plato can admit to this. And you know what? The answer, when they came in, I never said no. I said, we'll look at it. And that's all we can do is look at it. And if we say no, you know, the answer no all the time is sometimes, well, they get their attorneys and they'll say, okay, well, now you listen to it. So that has not been the approach of this board for six years. And so far, we have not been in any litigation or with a developer or anything. We haven't had any lawsuit other than the old Joe case. Let me respond to that, please. You keep talking about the $250,000, but you keep you never tell the residents the entire story about the $250,000. Okay, well, you were on the board. Let's hear it. That's pretty simple for you to sit up there and, and say okay. that. You realize that $250,000 we played in the, arbit the arbitration that we were involved in was part of a development agreement that was entered into by a previous administration. And part of the, the stipulations in that development agreement said if there was any misunderstandings or lack of agreements, uh, based on that uh, development agreement, you would enter into a uh, arbitration. So that's something that was handed to us. Good or bad, that was something that we inherited in that regard. And as far as the USD ordinance over there, that came that night, and you know yourself, to be jammed down the resident's throat. There was a motion in place that night for the USD. Nobody in that area was notified what the burdens that would have been on those families in that area. There was a number of stipulations in there that had a negative impact on You're those right. residents in that. And you didn't call anybody in that area and tell them to come to that meeting. I notified those people. You had a motion in place. And you tell me, you sit there and you tell me that come to you. And we can, agree, yep. we can agree to disagree. And it's not that I don't like any of your people. This is just us. This is just our oversight over the board. You tell us to come to you and get information. I pointed out at least three examples of situations where you misled the board, gave us false information, <laughs> this other gentleman here, at a public meeting. So what would we expect from you if we call you in a private conversation, Mr. Whitaker? More of the con job, more of the smoke and mirrors? Well, and yeah, I, yeah, I'm frustrated by it because I, I'm on to you, my friend. Yeah. I'm on to you. Awesome. And there's more residents that are being on to you than are in this room. That's the bottom line, my friend. That's all right. Mr. Supervisor, can I make a comment? Sure. I have represented more than probably more than 30 different municipalities and dealt with boards and city councils, and I have never seen a board that is more transparent and open to what's going on in this board, and particularly the supervisor, who shares everything he knows with the public to let them know what's going on. So to accuse him of somehow misinforming or misleading the residents of this township is just, in my mind, despicable and uncalled for. This is a very open and transparent board. Accuse him, point the out, facts are there, Ed. The facts are there, Ed. Wayne, you can interpret I'll the let facts. You, I'll, you, I'm not going to have to respond yeah. to you because... I'll give you the facts, my friend. Right. I know what the facts are, Wayne, because I'm involved with this board on the day. Oh, we know you're involved with the board. Oh, come on. Yes. Okay, all right, all right. Wait, 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 wait. Can I say one more thing? Yeah. Yeah. In response to claims that there was no attempt to get financing for these uh, uh, Chubb Road and Five Mile paving projects, um, the supervisor won't blow his own horn, so I will. He's the one who went to advance disposal and had a number of meetings with them and conversations, and it was through those discussions that advance disposal agreed to contribute $1.5 million to this township. So, let's, let's say be to accuse him, that. Wayne, I've got the floor. Let's be honest <laughs> to accuse that. him of not trying to get additional funding or to do things that are somehow underhanded, again, is just ridiculous. I didn't say anything underhanded. I said, was, how come you didn't look into grants for this? It's a county okay. Regardless of the grants, regardless of advanced disposals, 
uh, contribution to this. The residents of our community are still paying $1.3 million out of their pocket, $500 million or $500,000 for the Hamlet Streetscape project, and they didn't look into a grant for that. Now, if that was your money, Ed, you don't live in this community, you'd be sitting right here next to me complaining about that. And as far as, it, as, far as advanced disposal is concerned, they're on a good real tour around our township right now because they want an expansion. Don't you think that's a possibility? Thank you. All right, just, 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 um, I, I, Linda, you're next, right after. Okay, Wayne wants to set the record straight, so let's set it straight. We went to arbitration twice during his board. The first time I was appointed to the committee and we prevailed. And what Show Stack's claim was, and Mr. Walsey can't tell me I'm wrong because I sat in hours of arbitration and he did not, was that economic conditions had changed and therefore the development agreement should change. Mm -hmm. They didn't have anything to do with a bad agreement. The next time they went to arbitration, the brief that Mr. Signer went to court to force this township to provide had a little footnote. And the footnote said that the township was unduly delaying, and these are my words, unduly delaying the development because they were too busy going after their own citizens, at least one of whom's on the board and one who's standing speaking now. And, and so they prevailed that there had been a delay. <laughs> now, if you don't believe me, I have all my records digitized. Don't like paper. Stop over at the post office. I would be happy to bring up that brief that was forced after a public meeting where Showstack stood before that board and referenced that document, and Mr. Wachowski said that wasn't in his board packet. And another board member said, no, I put 13 copies of it into the then Supervisor Hiles office. And the next day, and I, I have some emails that were exchanged, and it was provided. And, and I believe Mr. Poito, he might not say I got technically everything correct, but I'm substantially correct that that document was then popped, and that's the language that the board was trying to hide, that they were too busy going after their own residents. If you'd like to know how they went after the Hamiltons, please come see me. We won over $200,000 in a wrongful termination lawsuit from this township. Whether it was right or wrong, this township signed off on it. I'd be happy to explain to you how I brought the state of Michigan in to have a $30,000 barn assessed appropriately because the township had their assessor assessed it at $110,000. And when I went to Board of Review, I got $17,000 of relief, even though I had from Chelsea Lumber Company the cost of the barn and the cost to install it. Be happy to show you what they did to my husband when he was a fire chief, how that he had to provide years of training, four inches of documentation in a weekend. And, and that's what Mr. Walsey thought was acceptable behavior for a board. So please come see me. I'd be happy not to tell you what the record says. I'll show you the records. Thank you. Okay. Um, so just to address one other issue um, as far as grants, um, this project was looked at, the Chubb Road project was looked for grants. Um, there might be some still available from what we're understanding and we're waiting to see if there's any that could possibly come for that. So we don't know that for sure. And on the streetscape uh, uh, that they brought up that there was nothing, so the question was asked, so basically how it happens, um, everybody knows that everybody is part-time here. We do not sit in this office all day. They don't pay us to do that. Um, but we do have a planner and we do have engineers that when a project like this comes up that we ask them and uh, um, Stamtech, Dima, and Ryan, who represent Stamtech, they come to us, they tell us what uh, grants are available. It can be from the, uh, the wastewater treatment plant in the Hamlet. They came to us, we applied for it, we won it. I think it was a $300,000 grant. Same with the street project. So I was asked in a public meeting if we ever applied for grants for the streetscape, and I didn't have an answer for it because I had to check with, so after the meeting, I went and checked with our planner, Paul Montana, and he said that he did <coughs> look into that and there wasn't anything available. I asked the engineers the same thing. So 
you know, again, you can ask a question, I might not have the answer, but it doesn't mean that I, we didn't follow. And it, but you're not gonna, everybody's not gonna agree, and I understand, but we try, I try, and I'm trying to be as honest as I can on any of this stuff, so. But I can't uh, force anybody to, but, but I am always available. And again, uh, if you Aren't don't you trust me, if you don't trust me, you can bring somebody or have one of the board members. If you don't trust them, you can, whatever. I, I, I don't know what to tell you, but I, I, I try to be as honest as I can be about the township. Business, so I live here too. So, uh, yeah, Mr. Covers. With regards to the, um, there was some accusation about the eight hundred thousand dollars that we have spent towards the engineering costs for the USD down there. That grant comes with stipulations from the state. And I'm the guy that has to put together, and I'm putting in the last quarter of the response right now. And every penny that has, goes into that has to be justified by the state, and not we cannot put any of our money or anything else goes into that. That grant has to be used up first. Once that grant is used up, then we get a five mail up, five million dollars up front. When that is gone, when construction is gone, then the contracts will be let and that money will be used to that. Until that is gone, I am accountable for every single penny that goes out. And as I am, I have to do it. I'm accountable to the state. We also have, uh, Ed Plato has gone to the state, has gone back and found out exactly everything that can and cannot be charged to the state. If there's anything that can't be charged, we, we either have to eat it or we have to pass that on to Showstack. And those that, and he has gone through the escrow fund. He has put up a lot for the meetings that has gone in the past. So we, as public money, yes, the grant is public money, but that that is from the legislature. That is not from Salem Township Board. And so therefore, I'm coming back and saying, we are being transparent with that money because it is my reputation, it's me, is responsible if that's not done i'm the one that has to go be accountable to the state and i'm going to guarantee you it's not going to be me it's going to be done right i never i never said that you weren't transparent with that money and how so when you were called on yet being spent. you weren't called on yet thank you all right so and, and as far as the escrow goes when we became uh the township board uh, <coughs> former board which mr walsey was on we, they had a negative eighty, ninety thousand dollars that they just said to write off, didn't even bother collecting from the Showstack group. We don't do that. We tell them this is what they got to pay to have these meetings, and we insist that it is, or we stop the reviews or not have the meetings. That's what we do. So it just, I'm just telling you, that's what. Gary, how can you say that? We tell them this is what they have to pay. You've given them three one-year extensions, no, no. and they haven't come up if with one dime. Does, no. So how does they, that you, work? You don't your understand whole, between your escrow. Scheme, no, your I'm whole scheme of things. You're, you're talking two different things. They haven't come up with one you're dime yet. Two different things. You're talking about an escrow. Gary, it, it doesn't make sense. I understand the escrow goes to the meetings, pays a little bit for Plato and that, but it has nothing to do with the you pay for all that. portion of it. That's what I'm saying. I'm talking about escrow. We make them pay their escrow, and that's what the money is. So when you say that they're, that, yeah, they haven't put anything to the the uh, development over there because nothing has been done yet. There's no approvals done yet. There's no infrastructure that's gone in yet. So well, that leads to a great question. Then. Why are you spending over eight hundred thousand dollars of public money? On this infrastructure, this is the grant. Before they come up with one cent for the infrastructure, why have you committed to that? That's irresponsible. You don't understand things, then. I had. It's 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 qualified for that grant? Well, I understand all that. Okay, that money is being used for that in that manner. 
Yeah, but why should it be spent until Shostak comes up with get some skin in the game? That's the question. I mean, that's, that's your, your, that's your way it is. You're spending public money before Shostak comes up with skin in the game. Why did you get? Why I'm did, asking you. Why did we? I'm, I'm, just, I'm answering you. Why did we have to pay them a quarter of a million dollars because See, something you didn't? No that's a are. cheap attorney's trick. That's a diversion. There. No, it's not. Answer my question. I am sir. answering your no, question. No, you're not. So, so no, let me just. All right. So let me just. That's a joke, Gary. All right. That's a joke. Can you listen? Answer the question. All right. I'm answering your question. Why don't you come up with any? Why don't you make them? Come on, okay. with some skin in the game. All right. Why? That's not the rule. The rule is is that well, if there's a the grant, oh, yeah. if there is a grant, that's, 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 all right. You can let me answer. answer you or not? I heard it all. Okay. If you don't I heard it all. You know, it's it's hilarious. hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking around the issue. I just want to clarify something. It was months ago that I asked the question about getting the grants for the streetscape and for Chubb Road, and Wayne wasn't here at that time. And you did follow up on me and let me know that it was checked into. Right. You didn't have a complete answer at that time, right. but you did get back to me after you did talk to Paul. So and that was discussed. Well, I appreciate months, that. Months and in turn, appreciate when Chubb Road came to the table, my first question was maybe to Mr. Converse or Mr. Whitaker, are there any grants available? Mm -hmm. The right. next meeting it came down right. that Thank as of now, we see no grants available. Well, I appreciate that. And if you dropped the ball with the streetscape project, it, very, you should have looked at the grants. No, no, no that's Again, what I just said. I just said, years, I, asked, I asked about the streetscape project the when it first money, came up. You know what? Money's always been spent for improvements on this township, regardless of what it's for. Whether it's roads, ditching, uh, infrastructure, you name it. And if something is a, a streetscape, it's, it's an improvement for the township. The I'm not saying itself. not do it. I'm not okay. saying not do it, but at least try to get a grant to help uh, ease the cost okay. of the residents. Okay. Especially when you went and got all that money. Did you not it. hear what they I did. said? Yeah, they did. Didn't get That's it. not what they said at the meeting. I was at the meeting. You they weren't at the meeting when I asked them the question. How come he didn't respond at that meeting? He just said, look, that's like deer he in the headlights. He, he did respond, respond right after it. So, that's exactly so, and lastly, I, the only thing I'd like to just say, and then we're, uh, we'll adjourn, is How many public as, as I did, um, you know, when you look at um, monies that has been spent through the grant or any of this money that comes in, I think everybody would know here if, if you decided not to do anything with the grant money that the township got for the infrastructure. Uh, what the developer would do and I think that's just indication I mean the town they the developers sued the township or didn't win but uh, the I think the lawsuit was what for 33 million Ed? I think 32 33 million yeah 33 million over something basically that the township got an argument with a developer um, and um, that's what they yeah, went to sue us for and because of not you know, looking into the infrastructure that you know, they said try to figure out how to, or we're asking them how to figure out financing. So I would believe that if we got the $10 million grant, didn't do anything with the $10 million grant, we'd be in court today. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, you, you can disagree with me, but I'm just telling you that's where we'd be. So to say for Showstack not to have any skin in the game, they're still, they still have $10 million to complete the project. So now if they go get another $10 million grant, I don't know what to do, but I'm just saying, you know, right now it looks like there's 20, and and uh, that they have gotten. So, um, the but, supervisor, can I just add, yeah. for the benefit of the residents that will understand this, I like to point out that the the grant money has to be used in increments. We get we get that money from the state, not all at one time. We get it in, in increments, and until we spend that money that we get, we don't get the next increment. So that's a as what Mr. Congress is in charge of doing is, is giving the state receipts for all the work that's done and then when that initial increment is exhausted, we'll get the next year. If we don't exhaust that money, we don't get the additional money and there's a certain time that we have to complete the project in. So if we sat back and, and said, okay, Showstack, you pay for everything, we're not going to use the grant money, we're not going to get that grant money because it only comes to us in chunks. 
didn't make any sense at all. Look at it in this context. Yeah. Nobody ever questioned the process of how the money has to be spent. All I said was, is why are we spending public money? We'll simplify this for you, Ed. All we, all we have to do here is why are we spending a dime of public money until Shostak has come up with some money? And you're saying you're worried about going to court. Why have a development agreement if you're, if you're not going to stand by this development agreement? He's blowing you off for three different development agreements, hasn't come up with one cent. So who's running the township? Shostak or you? And Wayne, there's one other thing that you need to realize. We're not putting a dime into this project. Not one dime. What is going in there is going to be, I said, going to be show stacks. Because when this bill comes out, if we, the ultimate bill can be $31 million for this total project. That is on the upper end for everything, everything, but everything. The grant money is public money, less sir. It, less, sir, it's public money. You don't get it. You're spending public money. If it wasn't public money, it would be our money that we'd be sending because we'd be in a lawsuit. But let me finish. The public money has to be spent first. And until that project down there it goes out for bid, before a, any contract is signed, Showstack and all the other players have to have, I have to have the complete amount, if it comes out to be 30, 40, 50 million, whatever it is, I have to have that money in my account before a shovel goes into the ground. You must not be listening. I said, why spend the money until Showstack comes up with the financing? It's that simple, sir. And then you can start spending the grant money. Let them come up with the shortfall that we're talking about. The government won't let them do it. They have to come up with it. They haven't, we haven't seen it, and you're spending all this money. Yeah, hey, Wayne, this is like taking a whole mortgage. They make you pay a lot of interest up front. We get the interest on the money now. It doesn't make any sense to me. Okay. Yeah. All right, any other uh, questions? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I just have a question about the, you know, the money that uh, the landfill gave, uh, gave us as a gift. Now, that was a gift to the Salem Township residents. You know, it seems like there should be, that should come off, the, what the town, that should come off that 1.3 million that the township puts in, so every resident in the township benefits from it. Because that was a gift that they gave to us. Why are we taking it off the amount that the property owners? It sounds like what you were going to do. Yeah, it was designated in their letter. I can get you a copy of the letter. It was designated for the roads. Right, for the roads. Well, why can't it come off of our, why does it have to come off of the, the property owner's amount? Why can't it come off of the township amount? Well, we're contributing it. It's, it's, we're yeah, we're giving them 1.3 million and they gave us a million dollar gift. Yeah. Why doesn't that come out of our 1.3 million? You know, why, did, why does that come off just with select people that, live, that own property on Chubb Road? And yeah, they're just putting it towards the, they want to put it towards the project. That's going to be $4 million. So why doesn't that reduce our, our liability by that amount? That's the question. Well, okay. so we just thought we'd be generous and say, yeah. Yeah. Okay. no answer? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Gary, can I change the subject a little bit? <laughs> I've probably known you since 92, I believe, when you bought the Varen Farm. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I've learned in the years that I met you. I would never in a lifetime meet with you privately. By the time I got my car a mile down the road, no matter what was said, whether I was right or whether I was wrong, you'd be calling your little cronies up, changing the story so you looked like an angel. I mean, and you've done that in the past, Gary. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, wow. it's true though. A lot of it's love. True. I'll stand right. All right. All right. So, all right. Anything else? What's that line? Did you have wow. There's been several times okay. I've been lying to me. What? A journey meeting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, listen. Just a couple things. Happy Valentine's Day coming up. The other thing is, um, 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 I'd like to thank my wife, beautiful wife back there. I know she doesn't like me to do this, but. Uh, uh, she puts on the refreshments every month and does the same for She's out uh, to Florida for a few months, and uh, so um, anyway, we appreciate all of her uh, um, 
hospitality that she provides for our meetings every month. So again, thank you folks for coming tonight. We're adjourned and happy Valentine's Day and we will see you. Have a great night.